We'll go to Toronto, Canada. We'll talk with Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Tim. What have you got for us tonight? That's good to hear. Uh, this is James again. Um, James uh, 2, uh, 12 and 13, okay. where he says, this, Speak and act as those who are going to be judged uh, by the law that gives freedom, uh, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone uh, who has not been merciful. M mercy triumphs over judgment. Kind of, It kind of contradicts the whole... Uh, there is therefore no no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Um, okay. Uh, well, Tim, let me speak to that. I mean, I don't think it contradicts it at all. Uh, in fact, I think it supports it. Let's back up and see if we can get some context here. Uh, he's saying if you're under the law, you're doomed. Look at verse 10. Whoever keeps the whole law, now that's the Jewish law, that's the Old Testament law, whoever keeps the whole Jewish law and yet stumbles in one point, has become guilty of all of it. And then he gives examples. for He has said, don't commit adultery, don't commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. And the same thing would hold true of any of those commandments. I mean, if you were very good your entire life at avoiding murder, let's say, and you avoided adultery, let's say, but you didn't, uh, well, let's say you stole something. That's the same as breaking all of the commands in the law. Uh, if you ever coveted, that's the same thing as scoring a 0% on your law keeping. So it's an all or nothing proposition. That's what the Jewish law is. And so he's saying, instead, you'd better opt for the law of liberty not the Mosaic law, not the Old Testament law. You had better opt for the law of grace, <laughs> the law of liberty, the law that gives freedom. You had better opt for the different law, the law under which you find freedom in the spirit of Christ Jesus. So that's what he's referring to here. And so he says, hey, speak and act as those who are judged by what? By a law of liberty. So don't run around pointing your finger at people saying, hey, you, you over there, you committed adultery, you're a dirty, rotten person, and I'm going to judge you. He's saying don't do that because as the old adage goes, I mean, one finger pointed at somebody else, well, there's three, three fingers pointed right back at you. Uh, so, you know, that's the kind of attitude he is talking about here. He is saying, speak and act as those who are judged by the law of liberty. Should you be afraid of being judged by a law of liberty? No. Uh, it's a pass-fail thing. You're either in Christ and in liberty, or you're still in Adam, dead in your sins and condemned by the law, meaning the Old Testament law. You're still under the condemnation of the law if you're still in Adam. So that's why he goes on in verse 13 and says, Judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy. So who would do that? Those would be people who are religious zealots living under Judaism, living under the law, living under a system of condemnation. They're not showing uh, mercy to other people, and mercy won't be shown to them. What goes around comes around. But what he's saying is mercy triumphs over judgment. So go ahead and be gracious and be merciful to other people. Act like who you are. Well, who are you? You're a person that is judged not by the Mosaic law, but judged by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So many times we see the word law, and it doesn't mean Moses. And this would be one of those cases. When it talks about a believer being under a law of liberty, that's talking about a principle of freedom, the power of freedom in Christ, the power of life in Christ Jesus. It makes me think of another passage where the Apostle Paul says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You say, oh no, that's another law. We're under the law of the spirit of life. Well, wait, it's not a bunch of commandments written on stone. It's just the word law designed to express the word principle or power or law. And so when we see what the law is, that the law is a life, 
that the law is a, a life in Christ Jesus, that the law is actually the Holy Spirit and his life in us giving us liberty. Well, that's exactly what James is talking about here in James 2.12, this law of liberty. Also, he refers to something earlier called the royal law. Uh, and so, you know, what is that? Well, it's the same that John talks about. John says there's a new command. His commands are not burdensome. Jesus said there's a new command, and it involves love, uh, loving other people as Jesus loved us. That is what is written on our hearts. That brings liberation. That brings joy. That brings love as we think about how much God loves us and then pass it on to other people. So don't be afraid of the word law every time it pops up. Don't be afraid of the word judgment. There is a final judgment, but it's black and white. It's sheep and goats. It's Revelation 20 and 21. It is clear as day, no gray area, no middle ground, no murky business to worry about. It's all or nothing, and that's what we see here. Judgment for those who are still in Adam, it will be merciless because they have shown no mercy to others living under a law-based system. But who are we? We live under a law of liberty, liberty and freedom in Christ Jesus, and we will be shown mercy because we know what it is to have his love and his grace poured out in our hearts through the new covenant. So those are my thoughts, Tim. I hope that brings some clarity to James 2 for you, and uh, feel free to call back anytime. Great to hear from you.